welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is yet another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. I'm your host Jack and I want to start out by saying if you enjoy these shows please stop by jackstechcorner.com and if you're watching this on YouTube you can see the uh, in the right hand side or uh, they changed the channel a little bit it may be below the video but you will find a link to go to Jack's Tech Corner Dot com and I have a lot of DVDs available for you now these DVDs are high resolution high quality um, these are all Photoshop element videos that you can follow along with and yes folks it does go from the uh, very basic and it goes all the way up to um, more advanced editing the best way to buy these right now is a uh, three DVD set you see I have volume one two and three and um, you get it for a lower price that way. You pick it up for $40, and that's for all 112 videos. There's 112 videos on a 3 DVD set. For you Mac folks out there, don't forget we have the Mac Edition, and it does have iPhoto. And the iPhoto part of it basically is how to organize your pictures, because Elements on a Mac doesn't come with the organizer that it does with on Windows. So that's the way, and if you, you don't want to pick up a DVD, but you want to help the show out anyway, by all means, click on the donation button. All donations are greatly appreciated and uh, very, very useful to help the show keep going, as well to help the uh, website maintain the website and purchase equipment. So thank you for everybody that's purchased the DVDs, and I'm sorry if you uh, think this is repetition, but we have a lot of new viewers every day, folks. So I want to get the website out there and make sure everybody has the opportunity to pick up a set of the DVDs. With that said, let's go ahead with this tutorial. This weekend I was sitting around and I was playing a little bit with elements and I thought, what can I do that's a little bit different? Well, I came up with a vignette. And we've done vignettes in the past. And you know, a normal vignette is a white edge around the outside here or maybe a darker black edge on the outside. So we've done vignettes. But I thought, there has to be a different kind of vignette that we can do that we haven't explored yet. And I came up with what I'm calling pattern vignette. It's using a pattern to make a vignette on your picture and to give it a little bit more pizzazz. So let's go ahead and get started with this week's tutorial or uh, this actual tutorial and we're going to go ahead first by starting. I have a picture opened up already in my full editor. We're going to duplicate the background just by doing a control J and uh, on the Mac, for you Mac fans out there, it is Command J. I'm sure you know that, but I'll just like to throw that out there to you. Now that we have that layer duplicated, what we are going to do is go up here, right click on our selection tool. See right here, you have a rectangular marquee tool. Right click on that, and we're going to go to the elliptical marquee tool. Now I like to use elliptical because it gives it a nicer. Uh, I guess a nicer fill to the picture or a nicer view. So we're going to start up on the top here. We're just going to start left click and just pull out. You're going to pull this circle out just sort of like that. And that made a selection around our lion here walking on the um, walking on the hillside. Now folks let's go to select and inverse. So what that's going to allow us to do is keep the lion sharp and we're going to add our vignette to the outside. So this is a very easy technique. Now to add the vignette, we're going to go here to our uh, Create Adjustment Layer. We're going to click on that and click on Pattern. Now as you see, it puts a pattern, almost as like a framing technique. Now we're going to click this pull down menu and pick out something a little different here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I kind of like the bubbles. Uh, it looks kind of nice to have the bubbles on there. Uh, there's a pattern here. There's a, like a woven pattern. So you can use any one of these you wish to use. Let's go ahead and just use this one for now. Okay. So now that we have that, we're going to click OK. Now, folks, what this does basically is adds a mask or a layer mask on top of the pattern that we can work with. So we're going to use that layer mask and we're going to kind of exploit that a little bit and actually do something with it. Now, down here in your color layers, in your color palette, you can see you can have it white over black or 
black over white just by clicking this little uh, piece on the bottom here. Here, we're going to flip it. You can flip it right here, back and forth. We're going to use the black. Now, when we take a brush and we paint with black, it's going to reveal what's behind it as long as we're clicked on this layer mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this and we're going to take this and um, basically paint over it to lower its opacity a little bit to give it that vignette fill. Here we go. We're going to click on our brush. Now, what I like to do with, I like to start closer with a um, higher opacity. Let's say we're going to go with 80. Um, no, I'm sorry. Let's go down a little bit. Reverse that, folks. You know this is live. Let's go with 45. So you're going to start closer with a lower opacity because we're going to make this so it's just a little bit uh, faded out here. Just like this. So it's a little bit faded. And then you can raise that opacity up to say 67% and we'll go around the outside a little bit more to give it a little bit more um, blending mode or a little bit more opacity in there. Go the way around there. Now you can see how you have that vignette fill coming to it because the pattern is now kind of blended in, but the, the line is still very, very sharp. That's what we were looking for. That's the uh, view you want to see. Then I thought when I was playing around with this, I thought, you know, that's okay, but these edges are really sharp around here. It almost looks like I did a cutout. I really don't want that fill to it. So what we're going to do is if you go down here on your toolbar, and as you move your mouse, remember, you can see the helper text. Click on Blur Tool. Now, all we're going to do at this point is we're just going to start blurring that. Just left-click your mouse and just go over that edge. And it doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot. Make sure your strength is set to 100. But what it's actually doing is blurring that edge down. And the more we go over it, the more blurring we'll get. And you just work yourself right around there, folks. We're just going to blur this down a little bit. It's just a way of basically blending that in with the background to get that edge not as sharp. It gives it a better uh, view or a better feel to the picture when, you, when your viewers look at it. And it makes it a more conversation piece than, hey, I just cut out the center there and threw a pattern on it. And you just work right around there. There we go. You can see where it actually blends it in. And if your vignette does not fill the way you want to, by all means, you go back to the brush tool. And let's say out here where it's kind of light. Watch, we'll flip this back, and we'll actually put some of that back in. Remember, if you paint with white, you hide. If you paint with black, you actually get to the point where you... Uh, if you paint with black... You reveal, as you can see here, and I painted with white, and I'm putting the white back, so I'm hiding it again. Then let's flip these back, because you're always painting with the with the foremost color. And we're going to drop the opacity down there even more, maybe 30. And then just go over this real lightly, so that way we can see the pattern even more. So this is something you can play around with. I just thought it was a nice little weekend project. And there you go. You have a nice crisp line in the middle. You can use this for portraits or you can use this at, uh, for animals or landscapes. It works very nice on landscapes also. Well, folks, I hope you've really enjoyed this video tutorial of using Photoshop Elements. And by all means, it, like I said, if you enjoy these things, stop over at the website. Have a look at those DVDs. A lot of you out there I know have already picked them up, and I do appreciate that. For those of who not uh, who have not picked up those DVDs, you know, take a look. I mean, uh, I keep the prices very low to make it very reasonable for you to uh, get these uh, DVDs in your collection. So until next time, as always, get those cameras out there. You know, click away. The more pictures you take, the more comfortable you're going to get taking pictures. And then get them home and get them into the uh, get them into Photoshop Elements and start editing those things down to. Uh, learn a little bit more about editing and see what you can create thank you very much for joining me i do appreciate it 
if you're not subscribed to the YouTube videos, click on the little subscribe uh, button there on the uh, video. And what that allows you to do is every time I post a new video, you'll be notified right on your YouTube homepage. So it's well worth it. And signing up for YouTube is actually free, so you can't be. It's a great deal. So until next time, I'm Jack. Thank you for watching Jack's Tech Corner, and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.